wanted to open the window, but didn't realize there are a lot of cars driving somewhere. A lot of ambient noise. We don't want that. Ooh. I'm going to pull up the chat. Chat, chat, chat. Oh, uh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do today? I am alive. Pulling up the chat. Welcome to the chat room. All right, what am I gonna gotta send something to the chat? What about the this? Dog cat. Yo. Alright. Um cool. Hello. Hello, hello. What are we doing today? Oh, I gotta share my screen. I think it is shared. Oh, I moved my face to the top right corner. So it sort of occupies you know the, the part of the screen where the notifications pop up. But if anything happens, uh no one sees it except for myself. So, all right, what were we doing last time? Last time we were po popping VLAN tags, which I couldn't figure out how to do. So I went back to the lab and uh, wanted to figure out what's going on. Okay, so, so here's a switch. Uh, the basic idea is, let's say we have a switch, right? And we have to, to, to uh, uh, virtual uh, local area networks in it. Let's say, right, we have the electrical engineering department and the computer science department connected to the VLAN ports over here. Now, um, in this situation, when we have the department sort of spread out between the buildings, right, we might have a situation where we have this switch over here with multiple connected uh, people from different departments and this switch over here with the same situation. Now we need to communicate with each other somehow and the naive solution would have been to have this uh but vlan port from here connected to a vlan port over here and then this group being connected to this group directly but then this becomes problematic if you have more than two switches so the solution for that is to have two switches and then to have a trunk link uh between them that that is able to forward traffic uh, to switch packets um, for any virtual local area networks but the way less switch so let's say if the packet is coming from four then it's being sent over here somewhere to 15. Uh, then it's being forwarded via one it comes to 16 and on this side the um this switch needs to figure out what which lan it's going to go into right which LAN it belongs to so for that um the 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 oh quantum computing from the I need this um i triple e 802.1q standard exists which takes the ethernet packet right let's 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 change this a little bit um takes the ethernet packet coming from here this guy and then it depends how many bytes of information one two uh four bytes over here that distinguish the original packet uh from sort of a, sort of a uh switch forwarded packet and this 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 the additional information here is essentially the distinguisher tag and the vlan tag that says that this packet in our case belongs to the to the elect what is it the computer science department right so on this side is going to be the this switch will be able to understand that it has to be forwarded somewhere in between and it's not going to let it go over there cool um and what we were doing yesterday is we had our networking set up and we were capturing packets on our interface before they were being processed by the kernel which means that um when we get a packet if we have this vlan set up over here well we might get is actually this instead of this frame format. But we want to, 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 to 
as soon as we raise the packet for higher level uh, layer processing, we want it to be to look like this. So we need to strip this this tag over here, right? So that's what we're doing last time. Uh, and I I I uh, so and we wrote some code for it, which which. Which, which now we're gonna test that it works because last time I didn't really understand what we're doing. So all right, let's uh, pull up a virtual box where our virtual machines, machine inside a machine. The the networking wisdom, the networking wisdom, is of course the higher you go, the higher the deeper. Let's say uh, what the uh, network wi uh, wizards tell you: the higher you go the deeper, the higher the layer of, of uh, your OSI stack, the deeper you are in the encapsulation hierarchy. So the higher the deeper, the higher the deeper. That's, uh, that's the uh, wisdom, old wisdom for today. All right, let's get into our machine. What? Uh, And if I recall correctly this time, let's get a couple windows. Oops. So I have this port forward and set up so I can, what? Oh, so I can SSH into a machine, a virtual machine via port 22. All right, uh, so we're inside. Let's, let's do a little, a little setup so, we so that we have all the Test scripts, alias. I should I should add this to the bash profile. Uh, let's see. Bash Ooh. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, ha, ha, ha. What was that? Yeah, let's do. Let's. Uh, Right, so we're doing uh, packet 0 0.3 where we're, oops, redirecting, right? Is that correct? No, that's not what we're doing. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, we were in rewriting packet 0.2, so we have a couple more. Oh, come on. Uh, so let's make it. Got my, all right. Um, T setup VLAN. Ooh, cool, we have our, uh, all right, let's look at the code. So, all right, so what we're doing yesterday and that I couldn't figure out, let's let's look at the code step by step. Uh, what we, whoa, that's a lot of lag, that's a lot of, why is it so, all right, that's better. Hmm. <laughs> so again, as an input to this function, we get our, uh, XDB context struct that describes the packet that we're looking at, and the, in this case, the Ethernet header because we already processed it, right? So we get the data end pointer. We uh, initialize a struct for a copy of the Ethernet header that we're going to understand how we're using later. Uh, we have the VLAN header pointer to the struct, whatever. Now, what we're interested in is figuring out if the packet we're looking at is actually this instead of this. Right, if it's been forwarded within the, the VLAN, and if so, we need to pop this header over here and figure out what the the VLAN identifier is. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, I found so many fun people on Twitch. Wild. Right. Well, the secret to to live streaming is 
So keep talking very loudly and pretend you understand something, no matter if anyone is watching or not. All right, so uh, we're getting the protocol of the encapsulated uh, stuff. That's, that's the same way as we were doing before. And then we actually, so this function looks like the encapsulated and the, the protocol right here. So if, if we have this file frame format here, then these, these two bytes are going to indicate that this is an, uh, what's it called? Dot one Q packet instead of a normal Ethernet packet. So we just detect that, correct? If it's not a VLAN packet, then we just go to out. At this point, we already have the, oh man, my, you know what, what? one second. Gotta figure out what's going on with my laptop. This shit is hot. Uh, it's not only hot, but I feel like it's using a lot of, yeah. Should kill something. This is, this is, this is the life we live in. Uh, might lower the bitrate here, so let it, how does, saw it yesterday, I should, should lower the bitrate a little bit for the video, how do we do that, hmm, no, I don't want chat settings, huh, edit layout, nope, It's a uh, Thanksgiving. I don't think anyone in the U.S. is gonna pop into the the stream today. But how the hell do I lower the bitrate? Twitch lower bitrate. I think I need to I need to restart the stream to lower my bitrate because my my laptop can handle this. All right, I'm gonna restart it in a second.